is a member of the Mice Chat Podcast Network. MicePod.com Now, the podcast that's nearly the same as all the others. Warning, this show contains childish adult content and is intended for immature, mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The views spoken are ours and ours alone, not those of any other bugger. If you're easily offended, we strongly suggest finding another podcast. Everybody neat and pretty, then on with the show. Welcome back. Uh, it's just very special. It's uh, after hours. It's a lock-in in the mouse's head. Um, I'm Paul. I'm Nick. I'm Craig. Mr. Mr. D, um, he's, he's had to disappear off early because uh, one of his daughters has apparently got engaged. So congratulations to... Congratulations. Well done, yeah. Which, whichever one it was. He didn't give the name away. So, you know. <sighs> anyway, yeah, joining us uh, in the bar tonight, we have... Go on, introduce yourselves, gents. All right, Good. I'll start it off there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the American, one of the two Americans on the show tonight. <laughs> my, my name is James from the Creepy Kingdom Podcast. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, this is Logan Seculo. I uh, am the founder of and creator of Laughagram, a new weekly uh, all comic strip paper that's in the States starting in the fall. As well as I directed a movie last year, I was on the show about called As Dreamers Do, and I'm happy just to be back here with you guys at the Mouse Set. Yes, and and we know it's a lock-in, so uh, I've got to kind of hit this. <laughs> I'm standing right now, just so you know. I'm, I'm, I'm standing. I'm, I'm, I'm standing. Put your hand on your heart. It's on me heart. <laughs> All hail I'm our American out. overlords. <laughs> I, I, I should probably start f- fading that out gently. Cause surely, that, surely that's not the national anthem anymore. I thought I thought they changed it a few years ago to uh, a little ditty by Trey Parker and Matt Stone. <laughs> America, <laughs> America, fuck yeah! Fuck yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's so... why when I watch the Super Bowl, and I do. Uh, at one o'clock in the morning or whatever time it starts in the UK super time um, that's the song I listen to so whatever Christine Aguilera is singing America fuck yeah gonna save the fucking world yeah <laughs> that's a lyrics it's been a long time yeah ah <laughs> oh <laughs> I, I... I think that's set the scene for the rest of the show. As, <laughs> as dear listener, you've probably recognised. Um, it, it is uh, coming up. Or, are we releasing this on July the 4th or around that? Bang, bang on. Bang July on July the, the 4th. 4th. So all the Americans waking up. You can all shed a tear with us. Uh, as, yeah, so happy, uh, happy Independence Day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. Pretty, uh, uh, I'll be here, and uh, uh, I'm in Oxford. Yeah, uh, I'll be in uh, London on the July 4th, but you know, whatever. <laughs> well, I'm, I mean, I'm actually celebrating American Independence Day the only way that I can in the UK, um, and that's getting drunk watching Back to the Future in uh, uh, an outdoor car park. Oh, well, I'm guessing it's a car park. It could just be a field, but it's an outdoor cinema. But it's unlike not more America, American we have than crappy that. ones. That's what I mean. Well, I, I'm, I'm, how many more films can be more American than that, other than obviously Team America? We've just established that. But the most know. American film ever made. Yeah, he I, sweats I, American. I, 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 I was thinking of Independence Day. There you go. Uh, oh yeah. shit, Darren. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no Jurassic Park. Because at least the RAF turn up in that and say, "Hello, what ho, chaps." And something stereotypically English to join in with independence. What I love about that film and about the British involvement in that film is the fact that that film was made in 1996. So we're way past the time 
or Dick Van Dyke offering to ch- um, clean up your fucking chimneys. <laughs> oh, chimney sweep, Governor. And yet, <laughs> 30 years on, it's still, oh, blimey, those American chaps want us to help out against the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so like, what the is this? Uh, that's not how you guys talk oh damn no 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 no. to be fair to be fair that is how some of us still talk Uh, okay Um, (laughs) you know twirling on moustaches do you know what we have missed out though we're in a bar no one's got a drink is it my round yeah get the ale in alright in which case um, I'm on a Bulmer's cider thank you very much and I'm not even going to pour it in a glass that's not very American I, yeah, to be honest, I've gone yes. for uh, something not very American either. But you can buy in America, so there's that. Um, I've gone for a brony. Hang on. There you go, boys. Chin chin. I am on a good old fashioned American Diet Coke. Because I'm yeah. do, still doing Slim and Wheel. Uh, if I was going to live up to stereotypes, I would ask what's American about having a Diet Coke. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, well, well, get well, in well, there. Well, 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 what did I say about punching? Before the show, the rules were no punching in the <laughs> face, no punching yes. in the balls. Yes. <laughs> Less than four minutes into the show, the all the punching in the nuts. Uh, Round uh, one of Cock Conkers commences. <laughs> <sighs> so well, I'm having a go. Diet Coke with Logan. I'm having Diet Coke as well because I have an apartment and I have no groceries, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm enjoying. And it's from my, from my home state. <laughs> Of uh, my original home state of Atlanta, Georgia, so the home city and state. Wow. So, representing uh, on the 4th of July. Well, God what's bless more, America. What is more American than, he, than, than the Coke? getting choked. Than Coke. Not, not much. Disney and Coke. Yeah. And, and now there is actually an American drinking Diet Coke. I've got to apologize for my comment. Fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but there's for no reason other than I like the flavor. <laughs> I, don't, I had Pizza Hut for dinner. Oh. Oh. That, that's pretty American. Other pizzas too. are available. <laughs> So actually, You're... that's a good point. Actually, hang on. Before we go to that, James, what was you drinking? Well, it's 4th of July. It's America. I drink good old moonshine. <laughs> Woo-hoo! <laughs> Fireworks, <laughs> mofo. Um, because we've had this conversation before about other, other eateries. But yeah. you've now um, been to one of what we call Pizza Huts. How does it compare to the Pizza Huts back home? It was pretty similar, actually, you know, other than, like, uh, a few things that were kind of random on the menu. My favorite was the, I posted on my Facebook page, was the Alabama-style popcorn chicken, which I know, or popcorn shrimp, which I don't know, I don't know what that is, because um, um. <laughs> I don't know what makes anything Alabama-style. Um, weird. But other than Alabama-style <laughs> popcorn shrimp and a few other, like, french fries, it was pretty much the same. I mean, mm. the pizza tasted pretty darn close. I was, I was very pleased with it. Al- Alabama-style, isn't that, doesn't that mean it, it's served in a Confederate flag? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was expecting. That, <laughs> Pop that, topic. That, that, <laughs> today's news right here. So. <laughs> we all know. Uh, that's last week's news. By the time this airs, there'll oh, be some other God, controversy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're never but known to be accurate. I kind of want to say congratulations, America, on, on um, equality, but I'm going to see by the time the show goes out, that would have been switched again. <laughs> So I'll just go back to how it was, <laughs> and everyone all have Confederate flags and, and gays on allowed anywhere. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Fun times. Fun times. <laughs> fun fun, fun times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait to bring it's us down, fun. Nick. Yeah. Mm. Bulmers, Bulmers crushed red berries. Well, then let's let's bring ourselves back up again. Um, it's American Independence Day. It is. We don't have any fireworks though. Um, I love. I'll have to find some, he says, hunting around for <laughs> that adequate firework type sound effect. Just 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 insert just insert Katy Perry firework, that'll do. That's why she wrote that song, wouldn't it? Something like that, yeah. You guys so have the right, you guys have have the, in. You guys have the rights to Katy Perry for the show? No. <laughs> no, but, Katy, but no one listens asked, anyway. I was gonna say Katy Perry's lawyers don't listen to this show anyway. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we asked the question. It's alright. She I, won't mind. I, I'm I'm wondering whether or not America, fuck yeah, is actually copyright free as well. I don't think that's in the public domain. Um, I think, <laughs> no, yeah. but I think <laughs> if you play less than 30 seconds, then you don't have to legally pay for it. And strangely enough, if you play less than 30 seconds of Katy Perry's fireworks, your ears don't bleed. <laughs> that's, that's not been joke. proven. That's not been proven. I, I'm not, I'm not going to take the risk personally. No, no. I couldn't care less so, about the legal implications. It's just my hearing. So Logan, I mean, since we last uh, we last had you on the show, um, you've you've been doing a lot of work 
And actually, I think one of the, the most American things we could talk about <laughs> so is your latest project. Is someone else doing a lot of work? <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's, Anna, that's Alabama style popcorn. Oh, that's from the Tennessee Alabama Firework Gift Shop. It's good. <laughs> Which exists all on our, on our state line I, I, because, of the, <laughs> because of the laws in Tennessee and Alabama. It gets a little blurry in Georgia. So there's the Tennessee Alabama Firework Gift Shops, which are all on the, on the border. But you were saying something. I have no sure. <laughs> idea. To, be honest, work. Yeah, so, to work. be honest, fireworks, fireworks are uh, a lot more insane than what I've got to say. Um, yeah. But, but no, you've, been working, you've been working on a, on a project recently, which <laughs> that's my bear. Now, that is fireworks. Oh, I'm well, thank you. For, the mouse is out. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Ooh. We go on. Sorry. Anyway, what we're show is going to go. We're going to get really drunk for this to work. I tried to keep um, it Disney. <laughs> so yeah, so Logan, so um, sure. you've just completed your latest project. Well, not completed it. You've you've successfully uh, started I, this I new it. project. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is this is pretty much as American as things get. Because to be honest, we've never really had what you're offering. Like we we used to get cartoons in newspapers, um, but they were pretty crappy. But American <laughs> comic strips used to be quite, pretty much a staple. That see, it kind of disappeared. So this is this is like where you brought it back. Yeah, yeah. So that's the project we're doing right now. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit how it came about. This half a gram started uh, kind of after we completed our film. It was released. We we're really excited about everything that happened with the release of our last movie. Uh, but there was some downtime in between, and, and in that I've been taking my son, who's now kind of been going to see movie ages, to uh, to see a movie. And we went to go see, uh, I think it was Big Hero 6 or, or one of those, or Paddington. Uh, and they showed the trailer for the Peanuts movie that's coming out uh, later mm. in the year. And it kind of hit me. I was like, that's strange. because Not him, because he's two and a half. You know, It's not like he... he Really, be reading the newspaper to begin with, but that most of the kids here, this could be this could be their first introduction to these characters, um, mm. where a lot of us, uh, really, honestly, pretty much every generation up until like my generation, which I'm, uh, I'll be thirty this year. It's not like a, I'm like sixty. Like pretty much showing any of off kids that were brought up in the in, in anywhere up until the till really the dawn of the probably the late nineties were exposed to these uh, comic strips every week as part of sort of their ritual of growing up and you lived in through these characters and it was part of learning how to read it was learning how to draw learning art learning comedy and it kind of was weird it was like it was almost being forgotten and i hadn't even really thought about it in a long time and i said well that'd be cool but there's no real way to get that back and we have it in the newspapers but no one in my no one i know really right now of, of my current demographic uh, subscribes the newspaper so we're like well how can we keep that experience alive so we launched a project called Laughagram, which is a weekly uh, comics-only newspaper. So it'll be a, it's about a six to eight page, depending on where we're going to be land, comic strip paper uh, with all the American classics um, that you can think of, pretty much, uh, you know, Peanuts and Garfield and all those. It's a brand new stuff uh, done by some Disney legends. Done by there's also you know, classic Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, and then uh, like I said, uh, Tom Bancroft did a strip. Aaron Hartline, who uh, just was the supervising animator on Lava, which is the short film that goes before Inside Out, is doing a strip, and it's going to be weekly in people's mailboxes in the states. Um, uh, not not in wow. the UK yet, but we're working on it. And we launched a Kickstarter campaign a couple months ago. It was successful, uh, and it looks like we'll be launching uh, kind of in, in in connection with the school year. So we'll be kind of launching. It looks like in September, August or September, uh, and you can subscribe still. Uh, at a discounted rate on our websites, but it's something we're really excited about. It's full color for the most part. Some strips are only in black and white because they're you know classics. But uh, there's stuff for Disney fans, there's stuff for Nickelodeon fans like Rugrats, and then there's stuff for uh, for anyone that just wants to see cool art because we have a lot of great original content as well as the classic. So to keep that short, that's that's what we're doing. Uh, and, and and also to keep it short. For people that, that want to make movies, know that you have to come up with these projects in between movies. Because the reason someone doesn't make a movie every year is because it takes a long time to get paid when you make a movie. <laughs> and you got to come up with other stuff. So that's what we've been doing. That's awesome. I mean, I'd like to say that we successfully helped you fund that Kickstarter. Absolutely. Um, no, we, we didn't. <laughs> Because basically, we forgot to mention it before it closed. Uh, we've, well, we've got, we got, the, know, we've got here, the, the, 
the mail for it about a week before. We meant to mention it on the show, and we I'll were a couple of shows behind and stuff. And, a lot of people yeah. came on and, and got our movie because of what they heard on the podcast, and those people have been connected with me for the last year. So I'm, I'm, I can say in some ways you guys at least helped get us out there. So. Oh, well, there you go. At least we're useful for something. Yeah, you are one of the, <laughs> one of the people that created an outlet for us. To but I'm going to be different. honest, when you, you, you mentioned it, when you come to us with it, I thought, and it was a shame it, it's, you know, at least at the moment, US only, but it's a yeah. great thing because, I mean, uh, and Paul and Craig can, can back me up here, but although we've never had, well, we've never had the, the comic strips in the same integrated way as it was like uh, in America, we did have things like, and still do, the Beano, the Dandy, uh, and, and comics like that, weekly comics, but just not maybe with the, the variety of characters. Right. And uh, the thing with the strips you get in America is, you know, you know, you mentioned Peanuts, you mentioned um, Rugrats, which is obviously uh, being turned into one. But a lot of those kind of comic strips, Heathcliff and stuff like that, Garfield, all turn into like successful cartoons. So for me, I knew about Peanuts and I knew about Garfield, but not really from the comic strips, but from the cartoons right. that they kind of span off from them. Absolutely. Um, so they're, they're a real integral part of uh, Americana, and you know, I'm, I'm glad it's worked out for you. And Absolutely. You with it. For, for American standpoint, one of the guys we interviewed, Guy Gilchrist, who's the current draw, or artist and cartoonist of the strip, Nancy, which has been around forever, and he kind of said, you know, uh, cartoons and real life cartoons, but comic strips specifically are uh, uniquely or you know, were originated in America. It's an American art form that created it. So it is something that's part of our, our heritage and everything. And, and we're excited to uh, get it to the next generation of kids uh, and, and adults that want to still read uh, these great strips. It's all totally, un- unlike this show tonight, uh, it's totally family friendly. And it's anything <laughs> that uh, you can bring the kids to, 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 uh, to read as well as yourself. So it, it's something we're doing. Uh, and really excited about it. But I appreciate your, your support. Thank you. How did you get all these like, classic, friendly, but... <laughs> was like, How did you get all those like big different brands to be as part yeah. of your, uh, mm. your paper? Well, it, to, trust me, to tell you the truth, man, it took forever. Uh, we're we we work with syndicators, so there's big there's King Features and and uh, you click Universal, and there's creators, and there's all these big syndicators that syndicate out these comic strips to newspapers across the country and some across the, you know throughout the world. And we were able to partner with them because uh, a lot of them are kind of the gatekeepers to mini brands and okay. it, it, the, the hardest part about it was explaining the idea because they're so used to being like all right well you know nashville has the tennessean and the tennessean has x number of strips and we license them and we're going hey we want to do this national and here's what we want to do and yeah and you could tell i mean it took months to get some of them not necessarily on board but just to understand like oh they're changing something new because they're not used to that it was pretty cool but yeah um there's a few that have come on board and like i said some of the guys like like Aaron Hartline, who's doing a, a great strip called Box Beat Circle, and he, like I said, he just did Lava, and Noah, who's a Disney fine artist. Those guys are just people we end up having either personal relationships with, or what's cool is the guys that do Dennis the Menace, Aaron, and a few of these other guys actually were backers to our Kickstarter project, and then I reached out to them and was like, you got anything for us? And they, and they oh, nice. came up with some cool stuff. So it's cool to see those guys come on board, as well as not only supporting it uh, financially and, and by supporting the, the project, but to actually be a part of it now. But yeah, so it's just... It's just working with syndicators and getting the rights to publish this stuff. Some of it's brand new. Some of it has been dormant for years, and we're just kind of republishing some of them. Have you ever come across a, a British sort of newspaper cartoon character called Andy Cap? Yes, uh, I have. He was actually – we were offered him uh, by uh, the syndicator that actually has Mickey Mouse and has Mickey and Donald, and um, they had Winnie the Pooh, and they don't anymore. I forget what other – they have a couple other Disney strips. Uh, and some classics, and they had Andy Cap, and we read it. And honestly, if it wasn't for some of the more adult leading material, I mean, I, I thought it was it was pretty hilarious, but maybe not not super appropriate for, for certain parents making a little mad at him. But I, I thought it was really funny. It, yeah, especially <laughs> if you end up translating it into German, <laughs> because he's known as Willy Wacker. Oh, <laughs> well. Yeah, no, no, we, no one's been able to explain that one, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how that, that works. But no, I, I, I'm aware of I, I thought the character was funny. We've actually, weirdly, that character is very popular in the States, um, or was very popular, especially in the 80s. He was like a, even like a, a mini golf. Uh, there was like a mini golf brand of him. 
uh, all throughout <laughs> Orlando or through like Brevard County throughout Florida. And you yeah, because why not? Yeah, and I have no idea why. <laughs> but if you even look up, like he was, I was like, oh man, this character's so familiar. Why do I know this? It's like, oh, he was part of a defunct chain of miniature golf courses in Florida, <laughs> you know? And, um, wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, he's, and you can still see him throughout different things in Americana, which is why when that one popped up, it's like, oh, I know that guy. And then I'm like, I have no idea. I don't, I don't remember this. I don't remember this trip. <laughs> but no, I do. I definitely do know it. And, it's just, and I wish we could carry it. Maybe if we do a. You know, teen and up version. We can we can get them in right now. We're focused on the kids. <laughs> well, I've got to be honest. I mean, I think, and I again, guys, back me up. But I'm pretty sure if you want to license a Disaster Dark comic strip about the ongoing adventures of four adult drunken idiots in England doing a crappy <laughs> Disney podcast, our rates are quite reasonable. Um, you know, we're quite easy to draw. So, uh, you know, well, you know, I get to work on it. Send it to me. I always say, because we had tons of artists that came in reverse art, send it to me and I'll, we'll consider all our options and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see if it's, if, if, yeah, we'll get all people to your people and so, yeah. you'll get right available. back to you. We'll, we'll, and we'll you don't them, mind we'll not keep getting them, we'll keep them file. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. We'll keep it on file. If it comes up, we have an empty slot. I'll give you a call. If you can also, this is our special it, file. Yeah. <laughs> it does for some reason when we put the paper into this special file it does well and sounds like it's being shredded but don't, don't take it seriously it's just just the type of file that it is special file special. locks it away in all, we spent, we spent in all it seriousness off. with that though that if people are out there listening and you guys too and you think you know what I always want to do a comic strip I, I have an idea I want to write something I want to draw, draw it if you can deliver something to us to take a look at I'm looking at everything uh, because we got to fill the pages so feel free if you have something to send us I'd be happy to at least uh, take a look at it and, and consider it for, if not the current version, maybe the next version or digital exclusives or something like that. My, my wow. Draw, my drawing ability matches only my ability to produce good, clean audio. <laughs> Shit, then. Yeah. Well, I guess it's over. <laughs> and I, that's, a, that's a bit like my uh, ability to talk on a podcast as well, so mine's not very good either. <laughs> Verbal um, diarrhea yeah. there. Verbal di- yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what we call a strip, verbal diarrhea. Um, <laughs> now speaking, speaking of verbal diarrhea, with our other guests as well. Oh, mate, what about the fucking segues? Yeah. This guy, we had, I mean, I, I think when you put the podcast out, we had a podcast out about the film Maleficent. And I mm. think the podcast went out and it was just under two hours, I think. Yeah, but I'm pretty, pretty sure we spoke for about three in yeah. total <laughs> about different things as well and uh, it was a pleasure to speak to you uh, for that amount of time but it, it, it did make me <laughs> laugh that you was actually able to condense it down to two hours and make well, it sound as good as it did well isn't the last uh, the last episode of Creepy Kingdom all about um, the up and coming Maleficent 2 yeah oh yeah, Electric Boogaloo Electric yeah, Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Yeah. yeah. She, 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 she starts break dancing she puts the cardboard out I think it's going to be she a good goes film. down on a gang of hobbits yeah Vin Diesel and uh, Jean Paul Van Damme to cameo. <laughs> I believe. Yeah, they're great dancers. <laughs> so, so, I, mean, you, I mean, you guys must be excited about, you know, the complete polar opposite of our opinion. You must be excited about Maleficent 2. Well, we're not really quite sure what we talked about on the episode what the hell the movie is going to be because uh, Maleficent kind of wrapped up, you know, the story pretty well. There didn't really, no really place to go. And also, uh, Angelina Jolie hasn't signed on for the movie, so oh, it's we're... going straight to DVD. Mm, then, yeah, we're kind of wondering what, it, what, what it's <laughs> to be. be. To, but do you actually? Do you honestly think if if they don't get uh, Jolie to sign, do you like believe it's going to go ahead? Because I can't no. see how it can do. I mean, I mean I, that was I one would... of the positives I had from the film. Was you know uh, she was mag- magnificent. Mag- uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah. She was magnificent. Good. magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's magnificent. Not Sir Jack Daniels, please. Um, I think that's what I don't need. If, if, she, if she didn't sign up for it, then would Maleficent 2 actually be a prequel to Maleficent, which in itself was a. Story oh, my head's battered now. It's like the space time continuum, this. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to go. I, yeah, but at the start of Maleficent, though, she's a little girl, so it can't be a prequel. Well, it could be more about that, which would not yeah. make for a good film. That would make a horrible film. No one wants to see that. 
But did, um, did, well, am I not? Am I right in thinking? I've got, I know, you know, I'm a few beers down, so I apologise for my memory being shit. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure when we spoke to Jim Hill, that they cut out a huge chunk yeah. of the film, yeah. which was about the backstory. Right. So that, yeah, that, that's one of the things I speculated on the show. Like maybe that's what the sequel is. This uh, part they cut out, which if they yeah. cut it out, it must have been for a good reason. <laughs> so I don't know why they're gonna. Well, especially because um, wasn't one of the I can't remember who the the character was. It, it may have been Maleficent's dad. I can't remember, but one of the people they cut oh, out is Dave. the new Doctor Dave. Who from Darlington. Hello, I'm <laughs> Dave from Darlington. My daughter Maleficent's a little cow. Cow? Yeah, cow. <laughs> a cow. There was no cows in Maleficent. But yeah, they they cut out. They cut it. What's his name? What's Doctor Who's name? Doctor. Uh, uh, Peter, no, uh, Peter, 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 Peter Capaldi. Peter Capaldi. So Peter oh, Capaldi yeah. filmed a lot from Lipperson, and they cut all of that sequence out, and then he got um, made the and new then Doctor. He, and then they so gave him a role really in weird. Paddington. And they did give him a role in Paddington, that's true. Yeah. The Peter file next door. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I've not seen Paddington, but I'm pretty sure... That is not the role. <laughs> Hello, little teddy bear. It didn't say that in the, in the edition of the stage he read when he went for the audition. <laughs> Let me just smear I'm, marmalade on my genitalia. I'm, I'm, here, I'm here for the audition for the role of <laughs> paedophile next door. <laughs> I, I, just, I just can't. There's something to sell in me. I don't think that's the role Peter Capaldi would have gone for. <laughs> but, oh, uh, nah, that's, 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 it's more of a Ray Winston role. Come and look well, at my I mean, sonic to be honest, screwdriver. I mean, that worries me. If if Ryan, James, you're, you're joking, not. Don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm the daddy. <laughs> Who's the daddy? What are the latest scores? Place your bits now. Now that uh, that joke has just completely gone over all the American listeners. <laughs> I was like, guys, what but... are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So so just to clarify that <laughs> that last shitty <laughs> impression, Ray Winston now, as well as being a famous actor, you know, in films such as. Bowel, where of course Scorn. he says that immortal line, I've come to kill your monster. <laughs> other than that, or, or and the, other films, the Sweeney, like where he that. says that immortal words, You arrested your, sl- you knew or nicked you slag. You sure yeah. nicked you slag. <laughs> but now Ray Winston advertises for uh, an betting. online betting company. And oh, nice. What, he, what they do, well, they, the advertising is really clever because if you're watching a game, so say you're watching England USA, right? England USA is happening. It goes to half time. So we're having a, a break in the adverts. The advert comes on. Ray Winston's floating head. You only see his floating head. And what he goes, he goes, All right, it's time to make a bet in play. These are the latest odds. And what they'll do is they will you post can't. the latest sporting odds on that game on the screen at that time. So it's all done in real time in line Ooh. with the online betting. So it's just to encourage you to make a bet during the game that you're watching. Yeah. But it's like, it's Wayne Winston. It's not Super like... Super Bowl adverts. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's we anything... We can do it live. It, it's not like it's anyone not very famous or not very good or not very well respected or not paid very well. Yet, his floating head keeps us to place a fucking <laughs> bet on a football match that we're watching. It's totally crazy. But honestly, America, this is what happens in the UK. What if he That's is just a head That's probably why you're better now. off over there. What if he's just like a head? Like Futurama. He's yeah. like a head in a jar. Oh. On a roller skate. For the next... Well, then I'll enjoy these films even more. For, for the next film, The Further Adventures of Ray Winston's Floating Head. <laughs> yeah. And I will say nice. this as well. <laughs> Earlier on, we did take the piss of, about the, the fact that in Independence Day, the movie, there were some really shocking impressions of some British people helping out against our American friends. However, if you want to see a really shitty American accent by a British actor... Go and see Fool's Gold, starring Ray Davis as a Louisiana pimp of some kind. Ray, I don't even know what he's supposed Ray to be. Ray Davis? As in Sorry, to say Ray Davis from the Kings. <laughs> I mean, Ray, Ray Winston. Ray Davis from the Kings can probably do a very good impression. Ray, I love you. Please don't, please don't take it out on me. Um, Ray Winston. I love, I love the fucking Kings. What am I supposed to do? I can't help it. Ray you Winston the does Kings? the worst American impression you've ever heard. It's absolutely appalling. So if yeah. you want to have retribution, that's what you want to go and listen it's, to. It's, it's shocking it's, stuff. It's, it's, it's revenge for Kevin Costner's Robin Hood. <laughs> He's choking. 
<laughs> you killed me. <laughs> you wish. Um, yeah. Uh, that's, what, of course, one of the funnier jokes in uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. Go into the light, Nick! Well. Go into the light! <laughs> Disney Brit, is that you? <laughs> Fuck off! Oh, sorry. So you said the light, not hell. <laughs> uh, I'm only joking, guys. <laughs> but, uh, I've, yeah, I mean, it is slightly worrying that the, the, the person that I thought I could talk about Maleficent 2 about and would say, yes, I cannot wait for this movie... He's telling me they're, <laughs> they're slightly worried by the... You know, just go back. Just go back. He, he's quite worrying. I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised. Maybe there's yeah. there's not the audience they think that's there for it. I don't know. I don't mean... I don't know who it's for, really. You know, like... Uh, I mean, the last movie made so much money. I guess, you know, a lot of people liked it. And I know you and I had some, some heated words about it. <laughs> but, um... I just, Friendly I just, banter. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't... I just feel like it's they're just making a sequel because it made money, not because they have a good story. <laughs> you know, so a bit know, like when we'll, people we'll say, see. "Didn't we say everything we need to say in the first Avatar?" Yeah, apparently not. There's three more of those coming. So. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, not all the first episodes of this after dark. <laughs> yes. You guys said everything yeah, in the man. first episode. <laughs> All the podcasts well, are available. Well, t- technically, we actually said everything we need to say in the first half of that record, which never saw the light of day because it didn't actually get recorded. Oh, the, the <laughs> best podcast, podcast ever. <laughs> well, oh. That's what that's what some people might say. Like, I can, mean, like Kanye West. Kanye West, <laughs> me, me and Paul. <laughs> Craig on occasion. <laughs> Mr. Dolan, obviously, he loves it. But, uh, but Slim Pickens other than that, of course. No, Slim, you, Pick, Slim uh, Pickens likes it as well. Slim Pickens likes yeah. it? I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that he does. <laughs> James, have you ever done uh, Walt Disney World on getting it back to something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you ever done Walt Disney, Disney World on the 4th of July? Uh, no, I would never go to that. That seems like crazy how crowded it is and it's hot. Yeah, I don't know. Have you guys been there around that time of year? No. Fuck no. I would never go in July. <laughs> what about Maybe you, Logan? Like, have have you ever been? Uh, I'm trying. I, I feel like I've been around the Fourth of July. I don't know if I've been on it. It's, I've been on New Year's Eve, so I feel like it's very, oh, probably very similar. So, yeah, that, that's as close as you need to get. Yeah, it, but uh, it's not without the heat. But yeah, I think I have. It's been. If it has been, it's been a long time ago. But I tried to. Now at this point, where I've gone a, a, a numerous amount of times, I can now say like, oh, let's, let's not go in July. <laughs> but well, I think. Uh, yeah. It surprises me how busy it gets around Christmas as well. Not that oh, it shouldn't insane. be, but what I mean is like Christmas Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done Christmas what? Day in, in the park. <laughs> and, uh, I've, I, that I did, we, we came down for Christmas Day through New Year's, uh, and yeah, it was pretty It was pretty intense. It, I would not yeah. recommend it. No, my friends did it last year, um, and they said it was, it was like hell on earth. And how you yeah. can make the Magic Kingdom hell on earth is... He's quite remarkable. I'll tell you what's worse, though. <laughs> I did Disneyland, right, like, the Christmas, the, the 23rd, and it was, I mean, imagine now the crowd at Disney World, but half the size of a park, and it was, it was, it was unbelievably bad. It was just, yeah. it was horrendous. Uh, uh, California Adventure stayed pretty quiet, but Disneyland Park was just nuts, and it was like a two-hour line to meet Baymax. It was, it was, it was rough. Ugh. Wow. But this is what I mean. This is what I don't get because I mean the thing is we don't we we talk a lot about Paris obviously and about the fact that it doesn't get that crowded. But there are times when it does reach capacity. Um, yeah, it, it does that around New Year's, and you know apparently it's just horrendous. And the same with Halloween actually. Halloween's another another popular time. And the thing is, what they've stopped doing is they've stopped doing like the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloweens. So. Not not entirely, but what I mean is, is like in America, they're on about three or four times a week, I think. Um, whilst in Paris, they only do them on, on like the weekends, um, and only like a few times during October. So there's not many of those days left, um, and, and they're just a nightmare. They're just a, a complete clusterfuck because there's just no organisation about them, and everyone tries to go at once, and you know the meet and greets are horrendous, and you know where you want to go. It's like when they do like the villains events at like Hollywood Studios and stuff like that. You want to go because of what's there, but you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, "Well, everyone else is thinking the same thing." 
So it's just going to be like an absolute nightmare. Yeah, they'd rather stuff us all in at once instead of spread it out. Have to spend more money and have people have a, but you know, more enjoyable experience. They'd rather everyone everyone pay it once and they just put it on once, like the villains event. Every yeah. I, you know, you know, I wish they should do that as much as they do. Not so scary, you know, yeah. but one time. But it's obviously like... it's obviously popular. That's a, that's the thing. Yeah. Like we I went to see um I went to see Fleetwood Mac the other night. They played the O2 in London. They played I think in total about seven or eight nights there, across wow. June and July. And the cheapest ticket you could get was about sixty-five pound plus booking fee. So for me and uh, my wife, it my wife, like <laughs> that is to, like, becoming the world's worst soon. catchphrase. Oh my god, blame, that's Borat, right? Blame, that's hilarious. Yeah, blame Borat, it, man. Don't blame me. I'm, all I'm doing is taking two thousand threes funny and transforming it to now. Exactly. Keep you it think his fun. testicles actually went in the other man's face? Yeah. Oh, that's That's genius. That That is pure. That's why he's so good. That's why it's so good. Um, (laughs) But we went to see Flea the other day because, like, you know, best part of 140 quid plus travel there plus food and everything like that. So you're looking at like a 200 pound night, and that was for the cheapest seats they had. People were paying like 200 pounds to sit on the floor to see you. And the O2 is a pretty big arena. You're looking at about uh, about 20, 20 or thousand. Did you just do like their that? classic they, hits, or did you try and do they, some they, mainly, mainly classic, mainly classic? So yeah, so if we're talking like US dollars, what are we looking at? Uh, Three hundred, about about four hundred odd dollars for the floor seats, and sixty quid is about uh, hundred and hundred and five dollars or something for the cheapest ticket. And really, they, really, those were the actual prices, or those just rumours? <laughs> oh! Oh, and, um, I have to admit, I did a little fist pump to myself. <laughs> I, just, I just had a tango in the night. But um, they're not those prices. But um, they played, we were talking about it with uh, the mother in law, and she said, like, wouldn't it make more sense, or wouldn't it be better if they did more shows, but charged like a lower price? Because then surely more people would come. And I said, but the, the thing is, they put on that many dates, they still had nearly all of them. Why would they do 16 dates at half the price if you can do eight dates and like get paid double the money? It makes no logical sense. But you would think Disney would learn and go, you know what? These villains events are popular. They're always rammed, but people always complain they're too busy. Why don't we do yes. another five of them? Why don't you just do them at the monthly event? It's yeah. like this. You and know what I mean? Still charge, still charge a premium for them. People will pay it. We're all monks. We love Disney, and we'll just like go Disney. Just take our money. Here's a card. Spend yeah, it on whatever you want. We go on a two-week holiday, don't we? So we would, if it was every Saturday, we would go on the Saturday of our two-week holiday. You do it. Yeah. Hmm, I'd do it. Yeah. Would you? Yeah, I'd be getting off with Maleficent. Oh. 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 oh what's your catchphrase, Craig? <laughs> oh, me palms are fit to burst. There you go. That's how we see Maleficent. <laughs> now there's one segment that we didn't manage to do on the last show that oh. we should have done and we're very much oh. in danger of not doing this show and I okay. don't think an American Independence Day special would be complete without doing some alphabet soup you're Ooh. right you're right okay we'll let the guests go first now hang on before we before we do that have do the guests know what we're doing now not in the slightest we haven't told them. Excellent. So that's always good. Well, in that case, let's not tell them anything. No. All oh, right. 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 So, guys, this is this is what the game is. And this, okay. actually, Craig, this is your thing. You tell them. Basically, we're up to the letter B. So you have to now pick a Disney word beginning with B, related to Disney in some way, and just give a little little chat about it, little talk. You know, it might be something in the parks, a film, a character, anything like that. We'll have, we'll have a bit of banter and then we move on to the next person. Uh, and if someone says your word first, then you have to pick another word. Alrighty. Uh, okay. Pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> as we as we throw that as we throw that on you, let's go on, Craig. Kick it off. Okay, I'm going to go yeah. with Buzz Lightyear straight away. Oh, he's in. Jack, jackpot. Wow. First in, best dressed. <laughs> Now, Buzz, damn good. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin is basically 
one of the best rides in Magic Kingdom for interacting with your children and teaching them how to lose gracefully. <laughs> Bless me. Bless me. Isn't Bless it? Me. Is it not? No. You no, take I'm, your, you crush oh, your hey, daughter. Magic Kingdom. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. You, you take your dreams, yeah, yeah, you'll win, and then you crush them. <laughs> you crush them like a mid like Do you a, know? Like the, uh, crush them like the dreams of a middle-aged man watching a James Bond film, realising that they're actually younger than you now. Yeah. yeah. Do you know all the hidden places to shoot to get, like, you know, a million points or whatever it is? I do. There's, all, the, there's all these places. I, I rode with a Disney when we, we shot a TV show there, and I rode with one of the guys that worked at Disney, and he maxed out his points within the first, like, two rooms because there's places you can shoot that give you... The maximum amount of points. Oh, I'm going to find what? out. You can find if you go online, you can find them. And it's like I, it, shoot a certain spot in the volcano, and you shoot and, and like shoot two things here, and then you'll get a few hundred thousand uh, points. It's pretty, uh, or, or you know, thirty thousand. I don't know what it is. I can't remember exactly. But he had all nines at the end across. Wow. So. Yes. Isn't there, Craig, the thing is, it's a good point you made there about breaking your daughter's dreams or your child's dreams, but <laughs> it can work the other way. Of which case, and I have not been the only person that's ever said this, getting off that fucking ride, okay? So let me just clarify that now. This is not just me that has turned around and said, oh, look at my score. My gun was broken. Because <laughs> that's the other way around. So if you can't get all nines, you yeah. flip reverse it. The gun was broken. I should have had your gun. The problem I have with any of those ones is the girls have... All ride photographs, I'm normally pulling a silly face or doing jazz hands or something stupid for the camera. <laughs> Except for Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, where you focus like the, a ninja. The, yeah, the, the, girl, yeah. the girls are having fun and just pointing the gun, waving it randomly and pointing. And I'm looking like I'm starring in Black Hawk Down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grinding. Yeah. There's you're... A, no, you're right. You're spot on because the thing is, every ride... So, like, um, my favourite one for that is Rock and Roller Coaster. Yeah. Right. I know where the camera is. Yeah. At the launch, so you I can always do my out. Zoolander, Blue Steel, <laughs> with my tits out, as Craig yeah. has pointed out, of course. But Blue Steel on the face, like Zoolander, every time. Great, fine. I'm not doing the, I'm not doing the shocker, so it's going to show up. It's all good. Huh? Right? <laughs> but Buzz Lightyear is one of those things where you're so immersed in the, what's going on around you and trying to look like a pussy by getting a shitty score. That, as you say, you, that's why your photo is always so serious. And it always catches you. Like, every time I go on that ride, I think, oh, I know the photo bit's coming up, so I'll do a crazy pose. Never happened. No. Never, ever happened. No. Something has distracted me before that camera's gone off. It's back to the opening scene of the gun barrel scene of a James Bond film. You think that's that cool. Look at me. I am a marksman. And, and there you are, in the low thousands. Yeah. Right, okay. Over to Logan. All right. Let's go. All right. I'm going Body Wars. Oh. Nice choice. Yes, nice. I, didn't, I didn't Google attractions to start with B. <laughs> I, I have distinct memories of this. I, it was, I remember it fondly in the fact that it was the one of the few rides. I was very afraid of roller coasters until I was like an early teen, and uh, I would never ride them. But my brother was like an extreme thrill rides guy, and I remember getting on Body Wars. Kid, he freaked out and walked out, and I was like, I can handle this. So I have a very <laughs> specific Body Wars and Star Tours. I think I was cool with the simulator. I shouldn't want to actually do anything. Um, but man, I, 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 you know, to just to, to kind of sum up my feeling of that, it's just one of those weird things because you can still, if you go for food and wine or flower and garden, you can walk through that pavilion that's just like, I mean, the last time I went a couple of years ago was like kind of half sad and abandoned and still looked like 1997. Um, it's, it's really interesting that that's still, I know that like the actual attraction doesn't exist, but that really nothing exists in that area. And I, uh, I find it fun and, and creepy and, uh, you know, I loved the ride, so I, I, I would wish that Litter Nimoy directed it, and I didn't just find that out on Google either. Um, <laughs> wow, wow, so much yeah. knowledge on body. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so, so, so Jim on. Hill's so, in the room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so hang on, so, so not only did he direct three men and a baby, <laughs> so, he also the question that. is. So the question is, what, what's a better accomplishment? <laughs> you know, I go, I go well, Body it. Wars. You know, now, my, my memory of Body Wars was that it had sick bags in. It, I believe it did, yeah. And I can remember 
basically spewing up, leaving the ride. Oh, see, the, my, the, my brother was the smart one at that. See, that's that's what you're saying. He, he knew it was coming. But no, I, I do remember that. It's just like they did, Mission Space has those too. And it's always one of those things where it's like, well, if this causes everyone to puke, <laughs> why is point? it open? <laughs> like, like, how did this get back? Like, all right, guys. So this ride we found out makes enough people vomit that we have to include <laughs> a bag. <laughs> I've actually been playing uh, Body Worlds this week. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm now lactose intolerant for the next week, so that's fun. <laughs> Inserting things Maybe. into various orifices. Have we missed a branch? Mm, possibly. <laughs> but am I right? Am I, did I read correctly that that, that inspired um, Inside Out in some weird way? Oh, that? definitely. Yeah. Sure. Did it, did it actually? That's awesome. I didn't know it. I knew I'm, it. Well, well, it's hilarious. But... Okay, so, right, so this sure is what happens with this Martin show. short film? I remember well, that the, film, the, yeah. The Canada one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. This, this is what happens. So, as, as some listeners will know, um, what we do is we talk a lot of shit and then we don't actually always back it up. Yeah. So, where Martin I've got Short this was one, in a shrunken down film and he went in somewhat inside someone. <laughs> Who are you, missus? Yeah, that's. Yeah, <laughs> you're talking about inner space. I've, I've and actually, got, oh, Dennis, it was Dennis yeah, Quaid yeah. got shrunk Dennis down Quaid. and got put in Martin Short. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. That was um, Adventures Through Inner Space was like that, the, the yeah. old Disneyland attraction. So that yeah. was a connection to inner space. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but, yeah, so there was an article the other day with, I think it was Pete Doctor uh, about Inside Out. And it was uh, that it had been influenced by an old attraction. And for some reason, I'm must have seen it was Body Wars or I just assumed it was Pete so, Doctor Pete Doctor the director Pete Doctor yeah Pete Doctor uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Oh, I, thought, I know my mate uni- Billy Bus Driver some, he's, some, he's, some university has to give him an honorary doctorate because I want a doctor doctor you know, hey, you know I, he's, <laughs> he's like the, he's like the director of a lot of the decent Pixar yeah. games yeah uh, and uh, some of the others I had a, a, a dentist that was Dr. Lawyer. Oh, that's real. Oh, Dr. wow. Who? Dr. Lawyer. <laughs> Dr. Lawyer. Dr. Lawyer. Lawyer. He was, there, is a, uh, there is a guy, and this is, this is genuine, there is a guy in Basildon who I've often frequented uh, when I was drunk on a night out. I've not been for a while, so I don't know if he's still there. Is um, Basildon a real place? He, mate, you've never heard of Bas Vegas? No. It's like the Las Vegas of Essex. So <laughs> there, was, there was a... And if that's not a claim to fame, nothing fucking is. So there was there was a kebab van. So in in, in the UK, we have a lot of um, stalls that sell kebabs or gyros, as you guys would know them. Um, we call them kebabs. And there was this one in particular in Basden, and every time I used to go to him because he was nearby, and I used to say the same thing to him every week, which is, I Back can't believe. No, no, I'm I'm quite gin. You don't oh, realise okay. that. I would say this to him every week because it was true. I'd say, I can't believe your it's name butter. is Mr. Kebab and you have a kebab van. <laughs> <laughs> because his name was Mr. Kebab. Now, oh, I, don't, I never actually found out for sure if his name was Mr. Kebab, but the kebab van clearly said it was Mr. Kebab's kebab van. So therefore, it should be. And before anyone else says it, because I want this to be known, there is also another very famous kebab van, which is called Jason's Donovan. That is true. <laughs> That is absolutely true. One phone branch of taxi. That. <laughs> it's true. It's a real thing. It's not right. a fun. Well, as, 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 as small village has just got a, a life, a local life insurance and, and financial advisor called Mr. De- ah. Mr. Who? <laughs> the local life insurance, Mr. Death. Yeah. Oh my God. Mr. De- nice. <laughs> right, James. James let's go for it. Give us a beat. Alrighty. My B is going to be Beastly Kingdom, the unbuilt oh, land and animal kingdom. Oh, <laughs> well played, <laughs> sir. Oh. Google well, is on just, fire just, tonight. Yeah, he just trumped the uh, body <laughs> horse. <laughs> yeah. He's, so, your one actually existed. This one didn't. Really? No, nope, it never existed. This was, there were, it's going to be uh, an evil dragon tower that breathes fire. Pretty. And uh, that there was a dragon roller coaster. This was, and uh, since this was cancelled, the Imagineers that worked on this actually uh, started working at Universal, and that's what became um, 
dueling dragon, dragon challenge yeah, yeah. which is now dragon challenge yeah so this that's that's the only real life remnant <laughs> of beastly kingdom is uh is that attractive but uh, beastly every- kingdom would have been brilliant wouldn't it yeah every time oh. i Think no, about it. I get so sad. Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> come to come to Animal Kingdom and get sucked off by a horse. <laughs> oh no, suck off a horse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, whatever, whichever way you go. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so was it because I because was the was the unicorn attraction also part of Beastly Kingdom or was that yeah, just coincidence? Yeah. No, yeah, it was, it was supposed to be the evil side was the dragon and the good side the quest of the unicorn. I'm not reading Wikipedia. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, I mean, I mean, because because next to next to what's now Dragon's Challenge, you've got the, the Huff and Puff ride or whatever uh, it's called. The hippogriff. The hippogriff. The hippogriff, the hippogriff, the hippogriff, the hippogriff, that's it, yeah. Huff so, the, they got a oh, what, is Harry, got a is Harry, shop next to it. <laughs> Harry fucking Potter. <laughs> Harry fucking Potter doesn't make sense. Like I love it, but the names don't make any sense. So that arrived before it changed to Harry, like the the whatever it was. Um, oh yeah, was, was it like a right? unicorn or something? Yeah. yeah so yeah, was, yeah, it, yeah. was that part of Beastly Kingdom as well, or uh, probably? Just... Yeah, you're right because it says here that there was a, a ride called the Quest of the Unicorn. So that probably is what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yes. So, just so. say yes, we don't check our facts yeah. anymore. Oh, yeah, that was the checklist. <laughs> but I will say, if if anyone doesn't really know, I mean, I mean, to be honest, you've summed it up very well in in like two minutes. But if anyone doesn't know, Beastly Kingdom and that whole original plan for Animal Kingdom um, makes really interesting reading. I think because to be honest, it, I think it's Disneyland Paris that fucked it up. Because if Disneyland Paris hadn't have lost the money that it had. Animal Kingdom may have existed in its original form. Hmm. I don't. Was it Disneyland Paris that that took money away from Animal Kingdom? I feel like that took well, money away from uh, California Adventure. Well, no, I, to be honest, I think I think it had a well, knock-on effect on everything. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, I, it definitely had an effect on some things, but um, it was all around that time. Because if you think, what Animal Kingdom came out in '98? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, Disneyland Paris started really making losses about 94, 93, 94. So, yeah, it probably would have been that time. That they'd have yeah, had to you're right. It. While yeah. they were making, no, yeah, while they were working on it, it was the same time. Let's, having... let's not say, let's not say I'm right because then that makes people think that I can know what I'm talking about. Let's just <laughs> say I could possibly it's know a possibility. something. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's let, a, let's leave it at that. Yeah, it's possible that it's possible that you might possibly know something. There you go. I'm not fucking Jim Hill. Um, <laughs> I don't think Jim Hill is Jim Hill. Is he? <laughs> well, sometimes. Um, okay, yeah. right. Who's next, Paul? Oh, Nick's going last. Controversial. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll I, go next if not. Go, no, go on. You go. Go on. Well, I had two Bs, so I'm hoping I'm not nicking the one that you you did. Um, I will go. Right <laughs> don't know where that's going. Um, I was going to say Disney's Boardwalk. Mm. That's a good one. Now, the reason why, mm. the reason why... Say that again. Disney's Boardwalk. Oh, no. Hold well on. <laughs> <laughs> say that again. <laughs> why? Why? You're going to edit it? Some standards? Nope. Not a clue as to what that's got to... <laughs> well, I know cockney? Cockney? it's a cockney. Oh, Disney's okay. Boardwalk. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go on. Yes, Didn't... yes. So, to our American listeners, I'm a fucking cockney, just like <laughs> the Van Dyke. That's right. I also eat the fucking chimney. So, this is oh, now. Excellent, it's I... dirty. <laughs> yeah, get off the chimney. To blow the bloody doors off. <laughs> there you go. There's a cockney as well. A cockney. So, I only. So, the reason I brought up this is bullcock is because I've never been. Doesn't that begin with I D mean... though? It's boardwalk. Oh, we'll give it to him. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Technicality. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to really be stuck in the letter D. <laughs> <laughs> Disney's but, magic kick. Go on, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I can see where this is going. D's going to be fucked. So, I, I never went. I only found out about it after I came back the last time I went. And it sounds so, brilliant. So, to come, so someone fill me in. <laughs> is it good? <laughs> Well, it's modeled after I think the boardwalks of New Jersey where I live, and it's yeah, pretty, Coney Island, yeah, yeah, around that, yeah, it, it, it's it's pretty much like that. It's 
you know, food's like way more expensive, but you know, it's, <laughs> I like, I like, I like hanging out there. I, mean, I think I love it, you know, and it's a nice little waterway to Epcot. Yeah. Uh, how, Boardwalk's how a good choice. It? It's pretty big. It's pretty huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. A pretty big space. Is that where the kitchen sink is? Mm. Yeah, that's at the beach, beach, beach yacht. Beaches that's the yacht club. Oh, is that the yacht club? Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yacht yeah, that's a beaches and cream. Yeah, ah, right. But it's all in that area. Oh. Yeah, it's that. But then there's like tons of restaurants that are connected to anything, and then stores and uh, and a dueling pianos bar, which is an awesome. Yeah, jelly rolls, isn't it? Jelly rolls. Yeah, absolutely wonderful place to get wasted. And there's a dance club, which is fun to go to because nobody's in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, what is that? What is that even? What is that called? Uh, I forget. Uh, Atlantic, I forget what it's called. Atlantic something. I got yeah, married. Dance at, hall I got married at Disney World. They presented that as a potential wedding venue. It was like this wow. Like, hang, on, like, like, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's let's rewind. Okay. Like as if we was on cassette. You yeah. got married at Disney. I did. Yeah. Why yeah, do we not know this? I, d- I don't know. I, I maybe it's I said it on another podcast. I just <laughs> forgot. But no, no. I got married at Disney in two thousand eight. Uh, Who did you get married to? To my wife, Amanda. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> my wife. My wife, Amanda. And uh, we got married at just like the uh, the wedding pavilion that's over by the Grand Floridian. And, uh, oh, wow. But our reception for it was before they started doing the dining, dining there. They're like, we have an idea. It was in the great movie ride. That's no awesome. Way. Yeah. Was it the, which, was it the Oz? Which I, yeah, well, it, we, everyone walked, well, which kind of stinks because we didn't get to experience all of it. Um, like, everyone walked through the rides. There was, like, an Italian area, and then there the gangster section, and then there was, like, a Western barbecue, and then you got to Oz, and Oz was, like, the cake and where we were. But by the time we got there, everyone was already into Oz. And there was, like, a, a the uh, Glinda the Good Witch surprised us, and she, I think, was drunk. And it was pretty hilarious. Um, and uh, <laughs> then to, like, shock all the guests, the... Uh, uh, the munchkins and the witch animated it was kind of bizarre and it was uh, <laughs> it was awesome. awesome it was awesome but it was like one of the and then we had dancing and where the screen is so yeah so, so back to where you were going boardwalk was it, was it on the, was that, no back to this one still fuck the boardwalk stop that yeah was, was this on the cars that they went round or did you actually like walk through you walked through, they took it, or I guess they parked the car somewhere. I don't really know how that oh, worked. Oh, how classic um, is that? But, yeah, they, I guess they've done it. You can, like, they've done D23 events, and I think they're now. But when we did it, they were like, hey, we're, we're experimenting with this. Would you guys, because uh, they were like, well, because they showed us that, like, Atlantic Dance Hall. And it was like, again, it's like kind of a sticky nightclub. They're like, yeah. this is kind of not cool. And they're like, well, here's a, a conference room, a ballroom in the, the, the like, contemporary. I'm like, okay, this is fine. We can potentially do this. And they're like, but we have another idea. And we're like, okay, that, that went with us. Uh, but yeah, they had, then they had, like, the actors were there, and they had, like, a whole show. It was, it was, uh, it was pretty awesome. It went to, like, two or three in the morning. It was crazy. I mean, um, to be honest, it's probably wow. better there. Then, you know, because I was thinking, like, what things are you going to stop at? You know, I was thinking, you know, the worst would probably be Alien. Alien. Yeah, I didn't get to walk through it because I, <laughs> I, I heard a lot of people that were like, yeah, they left everything on. So Alien was dropping down and, like, spinning on people. That, <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I, yeah. went through, I went through that scene <laughs> at, like, I don't know, 26 or something. Still uh-huh. shits me up. Yeah, and I know, uh, yeah. I know they're just robots. That scared me more. I think, than Halloween Horror Nights, where well, yeah, a real reason person that... is running at me with a chainsaw. Well, yeah, I have, a, like a, <laughs> uh, again, I have a little son, but like it's the reason, like, we've done pretty much everything with him that he can ride at parks, but I want to take him on a great movie ride, because like, he will freak out at Alien. That thing is God, yeah. genu- genuinely frightening. I mean, it's so That's loud, what... it's crazy. If somebody, again, if somebody wants to actually Google and learn stuff more than what we can probably tell you on here, Google the original idea for the alien encounter, which became Stitch's Great Escape. Oh, because yeah. Oh, yeah. originally that ride was supposed to be themed to alien. It was going to be called Nostromo. Uh, Nostromo? Was that the name of the ship? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. that ride was originally going to be based on the film Aliens. Well, it was still pretty frightening, <laughs> as I remember. Yeah, without it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So God knows that would end with that. That that story's cool, though. That's, that's amazing. I didn't even know you could get married. Well, not married in there but you could have your reception and that sounds awesome yeah I'll try to uh, see if I can float you some pictures so you can see some oh, random uh, you can see drunk Linda that's fine <laughs> <laughs> Paul uh, well top that alright well I have <laughs> of, all, of all the bees I picked 
because I wanted to test myself by using the word anthropomorphic. Oh. After this one, is uh, Benny the Cab. Oh, oh you've nice. got on the same website as me. Benny the Cab <laughs> from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Although I then found out that the ride in it's Lenny, Lenny right? is Lenny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. So, so I blew that on. Apparently, it's his cousin. So why yeah, they, why, course, why not? Benny? But... Why can't they call him Benny? <laughs> he was asking for too much money. Yeah. He was Benny the Cab was the Harry Shearer of the Who Framed Roger Rabbit franchise. <laughs> Yeah. What is you know the guy that played him, Charles Fleischer? Yeah, it's Roger it's Rabbit. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah, they have ben, yeah they have Benny the Cab is Roger. Is the no, 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 the real, the real Benny the Cab. Oh, yeah, no, the real Benny the Cab yeah. didn't want him more money. He, he yeah. asked for too much money. <laughs> yeah. Not the voice actor. Don't shout oh, yeah. <laughs> How ludicrous are you? Because <laughs> the, first, the first time I went to Magic Kingdom and, and Disney World itself, there was a Roger Rabbit character wandering around and in the parades and everything, but he's just disappeared completely, except in California. Yes. Yeah. And uh, well, there was that whole like... area, wasn't there, in the Hollywood Studios? Yeah, with the yeah Toon, Toonville, whatever the the, boxes the warehouse. Opened up and, yeah. yeah, just gone. It's it's like he's been wiped from the annals of Disney World history. Well, it's very weird, isn't it? the whole the whole Roger Rabbit Ra- Ra- yeah, the whole Roger Rabbit thing. Because, yeah, no, man, I can't pronounce my R's, I'm, and then I'm drunk, so I can't pronounce them. I'm, I'm, I'm going to save that one for the W week. <laughs> Watch out, Wabbit! He's a wapist <laughs> and a wobber. Um, that's that's Monty Python joke. Nice. Well, at least just put it out. <laughs> um, and a thief, and um, yeah, I mean it's quite it's quite weird when you look into it because obviously um, what they did was they you know Disney cut a deal with uh, Amblin. And Universal, and that's why they got all the characters to buy, kind of be integrated, and the profits are split at 50 50. But if you look at it, that even the characters, so Bugs Bunny, had to say the same amount of lines as Mickey Mouse in the film. They mm-hmm. say the exact same amount of lines. There could be no one upmanship about one character being better than another. It's fucking ludicrous when you look into it. But this is the reason why these things kind of faded the way they did because. I think they couldn't really come to a proper agreement about who could do attractions on it. Because obviously it was a Touchstone film release, but it was used with Amblin property and, and all stuff like that. And, uh, you know, Maybe that's weird. why he's Lenny the Cab then. Probably. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's like there was, um, you know, I, I don't know if anyone remembers the cartoon called Bonkers. Yeah, that was supposed to be a Roger Rabbit cartoon. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like, I've never, I've never actually like heard that for sure. So but when someone's you watch it, it, yeah, I, I, I when think you, I have. When heard you that. actually, when you actually like, if you've ever seen Bonkers, it felt like it should have been a Roger Rabbit cartoon because the the storyline is almost identical. I mean, obviously, you know, he's, he's a policeman or whatever, but it's like a, a cartoon animal that's a policeman with a human sidekick. It just feels very much like it should be Roger Rabbit. Um, and yet it's got nothing to do with Roger Rabbit at all. So that doesn't surprise me. But that's why there's not been a sequel. Yeah. Both parties wanted a sequel. And in fact, they were even talking up to about two or three years ago. They were still hoping to get an agreement done on a sequel to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. But I just think the boat's now sailed. Well, in good news, uh, Disney is releasing a Steven Spielberg movie in the next year or so called the big friendly the BFG. Giant. Yeah. yeah so hopefully they can mend their ways and that and that's successful maybe we'll get a roger rabbit too a new film or the roll doll classic the roll doll classic excellent yeah excellent mm. that will yeah. please the daughters fantastic um yeah. god dear it's approaching time right do we have a vote on on who gave i don't know how does this work craig what well. happens next do we vote on who who did the biggest <laughs> b yeah, no, they're all, no. They're all good, yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> I, I, vote, I, vote, I vote Logan. Sorry. Yeah. I vote yeah, Logan, I mean, that, yeah. That I, wedding I, I, story I, I, was pretty I, impressive. That, that, that was good, but I vote a draw between the two Americans, given that it is July the 4th. <laughs> all right. Thank you. No civil war needed we'll take, today. Yes, we'll take the victory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Um, um, just before we go, I suppose one thing we haven't actually done at all is actually... Um, We've mentioned where these guys are from or what they're doing, but 
if these guys want to find out more, if they want to listen to uh, the wonderful podcast, if they want to find out more about um, the comic strip um, that's coming out soon, then, uh, guys, how do we find you? Logan, if you want to go first. Sure, yep. If you want to uh, subscribe to Laughagram, you can go to laughagram.co. It'll, you can get to see our Kickstarter project and what we did, or you can just go straight to laughagramshop.com. Uh, There's also going to be a ton of merchandise, not just uh, not just subscriptions, because we have a cool little guy that was done by a Disney artist, and it's going to be all branded and all over a bunch of stuff. So Laughagram, uh, it's with an O, uh, .co, or laughagramshop.com. Brilliant. That's oh, thank it. Thank you. I- are you on Twitter as well? Or? Yeah, you can uh, you can find find me on Twitter at Logan Seculo. You can look it up and find it. Or at laugh underscore o underscore Graham, which stinks, but it's what it is. Uh, you know, <laughs> and we're on Periscope, and I do lots of crazy stuff, and we make new movies. And follow us, and you'll see lots of lots of fun things beyond just uh, new comic strips coming, uh, or new comic paper coming soon. Uh, we do a lot of stuff for everybody across the country, across the world, not just uh, in the States. So. And as Dreamers Do is still available in still, all good uh, video outlets and some shitty ones. Yes, exactly. All, <laughs> yeah. all, all the major digitals in America. Um, some, uh, it's been dubbed in German, which is my favorite version. Uh, nice. It's better than the original cut. Uh, it's, it's hilarious. I think it's dubbed <laughs> by like, two people also doing all the voices, which is the best part. Um, <laughs> and it's well worth watching. Uh, and yeah, as Dreamers Do is available. Stop invading Poland. Yeah. The easiest way to get it is 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 to get it on Amazon, and if you're on Amazon Prime or Hulu Plus, you can watch. Or I guess now just Hulu, but Hulu Plus or Amazon Prime uh, in the states, you can watch it uh, with your subscription. And in the UK, if you need a dub in the UK, um, because you know sometimes we obviously can't understand American, yeah. Um, yeah. Craig, we'll get you guys to do it. You up for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. It's worth a try, as long as I can do Lillian. I'd love, I'd love Craig to do Walt Disney and his Scouse accent. It'd be fucking great. <laughs> I, I think we may have to ask permission just to dub some scenes anyway. Hey, hey, feel free to do it. I can send you it with no audio. We had to do it from German. Nice. And, uh, I'll get you all the sound effects. Oh. Guys, I think we've got, us, I think we've got our summer projects on the way. It can't be, it can't be any worse. So I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's still available. But I do want to see that version now. James. <laughs> yes. Hi. I know. How's it going? Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you can check out my podcast, which is uh, all about creepy Disney stuff, by going to creepykingdom.com. And I am on Twitter, at Creepy Kingdom. And uh, I also want to plug an upcoming event Ooh. that Ooh. I'm going to be uh, a part of. If you're going to be going to D23 Expo, and you're going to be in the Anaheim area, on the 16th of August, is the premiere screening of the Dark Side of Disney documentary, which <gasps> I'm here in, and I will be hosting the Q&A. So if you're going to be at D23, come check out this documentary. We should uh, have this yeah, out before then, shouldn't we, Paul? Hopefully. <laughs> ho- 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 hopefully we'll meet the July the 4th deadline. We've kind of, we've kind well, of not artificially set ourselves. <laughs> well, I mean, we actually, we actually had, I think one of our first guests ever was the Dark Side of Disney. Yeah. yeah, I think Very they were nice. like like show show three or four or something like that, if I yeah. remember rightly. So um, maybe we should get back in touch with those guys to have a a, a review before uh, before shows, it goes uh, out. So yeah. you're all yeah. masturbating together. And on the, on the... while <laughs> while I must say, yeah, I'm sure we can get the old gang back together. I'm sure that that won't the be old a gang back involved. back together. We're yeah. getting the band back together. <laughs> but um, but on that note as well, I mean, although Creepy Kingdom is a is a great podcast, and there's the problem is there's too many Disney podcasts. You have to pick and choose which ones you listen to. Creepy sure. Kingdom is one of the better ones, other than ours, obviously. Um, it's got a, it's got a hook on it. It's got a handle. It's got a, it's got its own identity. It's it's got its that's creepiness. It. It's you know that's why I listen different. to it. Yeah. yeah. And can I just recommend awesome. uh, episode 36 is a cracking episode. Really good guest on there. Um, not had much of them since, but very good guests. So I recommend episode 36 from the 26th of September. Uh, wow. Wow. You're um, really, that, that particular one, you got the date down and everything. <laughs> Look, when you love a podcast as much as I do, I think it's good to know the facts. That's all I'm saying. And if you don't want to do that, it's up to you. But if you, if you care, if you give two shits about us or the guests on this show tonight, listen to what I'm saying. On that note, if you want to get in touch with us at all over here, then they can contact us at www.disasterdark.com or they can email us at podcast at disasterdark.com. 
Dot we did get an email once, didn't we? We did once, yeah. Yeah, Viagra. Brilliant. Well, I'm glad I'm glad we actioned that one. Um, <laughs> and uh, as Paul's not here, Paul, do you want to take over the other duties, or do you want me to do that as well? Uh, go on, go ahead. Facebook.com forward slash Diz After Dark and on Twitter at Diz After, After Dark on Periscope, Periscope. on Bebo on Bebo. Teletext on Smoke Signal on Courier Pigeon on MySpace <laughs> on Google Jim. Hangouts on LinkedIn on uh, uh, Friendstar <laughs> on <laughs> I've run out I've run out of ways that we won't be anywhere handwritten letters <laughs> handwritten letters <laughs> Text messages. This show's Snapchat, coming out on Morse code. Any more fish? Plenty of fish. Uh, Tinder. Match.com, Tinder, yeah. Match.com. Yeah. Tinder? Yeah, I want to find you guys on Tinder for sure. Gaydar, but on Gaydar. <laughs> you know what, honestly? Craig, just make it happen. Growing up. Well, I think I'm just going to hit that. Part. Growing up <laughs> is optional. This After Dark, the podcast that's nearly the same as all the others. And more importantly, happy July 4th to yes, all our Americans. Thank you listeners. very much. Thank God you very much, America. guys. I I all the game. Game. This, is, this <laughs> is something else. At least you're proud to host a day about yourselves. Even we don't manage to do that. Join, join us next week for the Bastille Day Paris Disneyland celebration. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh la la. J- J- surely, surely Japan for Tokyo and. China and Hong Kong have, have special days as well. Yeah, it's just, just get it on everything, yeah. Yeah, we just don't bother to do one. We have another St. George's Day special. Because it's not special. We should all go to France and slay the was dragon. He was Turkish and not even real. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for coming on the Thanks. show. Right, thank, you. thank you. Bye-bye. 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 B